Welcome back to the Payne's Creek Killings. I've got many keys and many things that I can do right now. First thing I think I want to do is open Stephen Moss's briefcase. And while I was heading here, I stopped at the post office, and if you remember, we read that note from... from... was it Matthew? Or from Sophia? I guess it was from Sophia saying that Matthew had devised the, the game were hidden around locations that Sophia used to like and Matthew used to like. There were like little hints on where to go to find her birthday present or something like that. Well, I stopped at the post office and found this stream. Obviously that's only part of the whole thing, but I'm almost certain that this has to do with the red box. Because remember I found the key or the, the code to the red box written on the church, which surely would have been one of Matthew's favorite places. And it was by a stream, so the others are probably stream and like, in a, you know, hollowed out log or whatever, stump, something like that. So I'm pretty sure I just kind of shortcutted that whole thing and just went straight to the answer before and got really lucky. That's not to say I'm not going to follow up on it a little bit, but I'm pretty sure that that's all it is, and there's no point in doing it. All right, Steven, what's in your briefcase? <laughs> okay. Okay, so that's how you're supposed to solve the dartboard thing. Okay, I actually didn't have to cheat to get it. It turns out you do find a picture of it. I guess Stephen Moss had been in the home, in Bernard's house, took a picture of it, and then at some point it fell out. I gotta say though, that's really terrible. That is so terrible to do that to the player. Because you have no way of knowing that someone's taken a picture of it at the time that you encountered the puzzle. So why wouldn't you try to find the answer? You have the clue, you have the dartboard. Everything seems like you have the answer to it. So I still don't feel bad about cheating the answer to it, it's ridiculous. I feel bad that I spent like an hour trying to solve it, not knowing that it couldn't be solved at the time. Oh, the code for Charles is safe in the gallery is Vincent Bur Vincent's birthday. How could I not have thought about that? Call Sheriff James. Check his file. 7741. Is that the sheriff's locker code? All right, I got that noted down. Now Vincent's, AKA Scott's date of birth is the password for the gallery. Um, gallery safe code is Scott's dub, which is June 1st. So 06 slash 01 slash 75. Or, well, I'll just try the different formats of that, because that's month of day. Might be day month, who knows, we'll try it. Autopsy report. Andrew Reed. Okay, so... Performed an autopsy on the body. Wait, I, I performed an autopsy on the body of the Department of Coroner? What? Huh? That, that doesn't make any sense. I, okay, at, at the, what the hell? I performed an autopsy on the body of Andrew Reed at the Department of Cor the Formatting makes no sense. Anyway, Andrew Reed, so third degree burns in Pneumothorax. Third degree burns, of course, I mean, they burn to death, right? But what is pneumothorax? Summary, 44-year-old white male with burns found at home pronounced dead at the scene. Third degree burns found across his body, completely charred over the head, face, neck, and hands. Heavily charred across the front and back of the body, legs, and feet. Closer inspection, 
reveals punctured lungs with an object similar to a switchblade or small knife. Pneumothorax is a possible cause of death, but the body is too burnt to be determined. Pneumothorax is a collapsed lung. So, died from a collapsed lung from being stabbed, since the knife punctured the lungs. Yes, yeah, so this is similar to a switchblade or small knife. So, I was thinking, and I, I still am thinking, that Matthew is the one who killed Andrew, because remember the diary that mentions Matthew found out about Andrew's role in Sophia's death. Remember Matthew loved Sophia, found out about Andrew's role in their death, and said that they were going to go confront them the day before Andrew was found dead. But, a switchblade or a small knife. That makes me think of Derek. That's the only switchblade or small knife we found, is with Derek. We certainly found knives at, if no one else's, Bernard's house, but those were pretty large. In fact, let's take a look at them. I think I have pictures. Remember all those shattered cases at Bernard's? Yeah, like, that is not a small blade or a small knife or a switchblade at all. That is way too large. See, the only weapon I found that matches that description is Derek's. But why would Derek do that? Or someone stole Derek's weapon? Or there's just another... You know, I mean, maybe Matthew had a small blade. We have no idea what Matthew could have used for a weapon. It's just that based on what I've found so far, I believe Matthew killed Andrew. And Derek's weapon is the only one that matches the description. But yeah, I don't believe Derek killed... Um... Killed Andrew. I, I don't think that'd make any sense. The only people he would want to kill would be people that had something to do with... You know, what happens with, with Trisha. Somebody who was standing in the way of him and Trisha. Or made Trisha unhappy or something like that. Like Scott. He'd have no reason to kill... Andrew. Andrew didn't do anything bad to Sophia, just... Or, sorry, anything bad to Trisha, just Sophia. Autopsy report for Andrew says, They died of burns and collapsed lungs from being stabbed by a small knife or switchblade. Matthew probably killed Andrew. But... Derek's... Pocket knife? Is the only small blade I found... Andrew, Matthew, and Derek. Alright. Take a picture of that, and we got some more here. Henry Johnson and Vivian. Remember, one of my main things I'm trying to do here is find the murder weapon of... Find who killed Vivian and how they killed her with what murder weapon. And I have had no clue about how Vivian actually died until now, I guess. But anyway, Henry Johnson. Exsanguination. That is, they can't breathe, right? 61-year-old white male pulled out of car submerged in lake. Victim's lungs do not contain water, which shows that he did not die by drowning. Okay, so they were placed in the water. Due to the prolonged submerge, <laughs> due, to the, due to the prolonged submergence of the body in water, the estimated time of death might not be accurate. Estimated time of death is between 12 to 16 days. Okay. Important to note, so we don't have any hard date on when exactly Henry Johnson died. Top right side of the skull, leaning towards the front and above the right eye, has a wide crack, usually caused by a sharp object and strong force. Front torso, face, and back portion of forearms suffer numerous lacerations. Victim most probably died from blood loss before being placed in water. So the skull has a wide crack usually caused by sharp object and strong force. That makes me think... of an axe. Strong force, sharp object. Remember, we've seen, I think, multiple axes, certainly in Bernard's place. Where is it? 
I'm totally blanking on where they are. Here they are. Yeah, so we have this broken, like, display case with a bunch of axes in it, including three empty slots where there could have been even more axes. So maybe that was Johnson's murder weapon. Murder weapon used against Johnson, of course. I'm trying to think if we've seen axes anywhere else. I remember we saw weapon, like we saw guns in a display case at the cabin of Scott's, but I don't think we saw axes. Hmm. But why would Bernard kill? Oh, actually, no. Bernard killed about cared about Vivian. Bernard was in love with Vivian. I don't think he cared about Sophia. Henry Johnson died before being put in the water, had a wide crack in skull from sharp, strong object, blood loss, killed by axe, Bernard's missing axe. And we come to Vivian Roberts, 55 year old white female find, found lying in front of mansion gates pronounced dead at the scene. 12 centimeter wide and 7 centimeter deep crack found on the right side of the head. Impact caused by strong force with a sharp object. Lacerations on the front torso and backside of both forearms. Victim died from blood loss. So... It sounds like they died pretty much the same way that Henry died. Also, it sounds like with an axe. And blood loss. Again, the only missing axe I've found is at Bernard's, but there's no way Bernard would kill Vivian. Bernard was in love with Vivian. Vivian found dead from loss of blood. Big crack and skull, also probably from axe. Bernard's? Doesn't add up, though. Bernard loved Vivian. I mean, why would the display case in Bernard's home be broken? If it was Bernard that took an axe out and used it to kill Henry Johnson and or Vivian, then Bernard could have just opened it with a key, right? Why would he break it? That suggests someone broke into his house and then broke into his axes, right? Okay, I think that's it. Those three reports, the picture, this. Okay. Everywhere we go, I find more and more clues. Oh, I'm so happy. Where to go next? Let's go all the way back to the beginning. The sheriff's office. So Stephen Moss, I think, had the code to this. 7741. So does that open the whole thing? Oh, oh wow. Lots of goodies. Oh, so many goodies. I can barely even see over the lip to read the goodies. May 13th, 1997, to Sheriff Howard. The crack in Vivian Roberts' skull shows that the weapon used is an object with a heavy and sharp end. Something like an ax would fit the description. To cause a crack that big, the attacker must be a pretty strong. I'm assuming it's either a man or a strong woman who is experienced in the use of the weapon. The victim must have been facing the attacker because of the lacerations found on the front of her torso as well as the back side of both forearms, showing that she tried to block the attacks by holding up her arms. The fatal strike landed on the right side of the victim's head right above her right eyebrows. This clarifies the following, that the victim was facing the killer that the killer is strong enough to land such a clean but deadly blow. That the killer's left-handed. By the way, the murder weapon was never recovered. Since this is me doing you a favor, do not under any circumstances leak this information or I'll be in big trouble. The police did not want the public to know about these details. Hope the above information helps. 
isn't somebody... Somebody's left-handed. Somebody's left-handed. I mean, I know somebody's left-handed. I vaguely remember hearing something about somebody being left-handed, but I don't remember who. Was it Matthew? I think someone in the comments even mentioned somebody, something about somebody being left-handed. Well, that is going to give us the killer pretty easily, I think, once I confirm who it is. I just don't understand this, though. The fatal strike landed on the right side of the victim's head, right above her right eyebrows. So this confirms that the killer's left-handed. How, how does that confirm that the killer's left-handed? I mean, I'm accept accepting that that's what the game wants me to believe, but... I mean, in real life, how does that confirm that? I'm right-handed, and I feel like if I held an axe, I would... Uh, I'd probably be more comfortable swinging it from, like, right to left, and... I feel like I... I don't know. That just doesn't seem like it confirms it at all. But I will accept the information. I'm not sure why I feel the need to take pictures of that stuff, because I know it's all saved. The main notes like that are saved. Okay, so I think the key information there is... Vivian's killer is left-handed. Who did I read about being left-handed? I don't think- there's certainly nothing in my notes for that, right? No. Vivian Roberts' murder case, record of alibi. Interview record, recorded July 25th, 1995. Interview of Charles Roberts. I wasn't there, I wasn't here when my wife was killed. I left for New York on July 18th to attend a conference meeting that was supposed to last for three days. I was supposed to be back on the weekend. On the morning of July 20th, however, I received a phone call from our butler, Bernard, telling me that Vivian had been murdered. I could not believe what I heard. I cut short my trip and immediately came back to Paines Creek. It's an interview of Matthew Brooks, July 25th, so same day. There's the annual religious gathering event in Hartford which pastors from different churches on the East Coast area meet and discuss about what we can do to help our society. The event started on July 18th for five days which included the prayer nights that ended on July 23rd. I represent Paints Creek Trinity Church at the event. Our church can confirm this because we had to cancel our Sunday service that week. So Matthew has an alibi, huh? All on the same day, Bernard Hopkins. I was preparing for the fundraising event when I felt sick. However, there was no one who can really do my job, so I kept working. At about nine in the evening, I was too sick to continue, so I bid Vivian goodnight and headed back home. Dorothy saw me leave. No, there was no one else at home. I live alone. Dorothy? Yes, Bernard was not feeling well that day, so he left slightly earlier than usual. However, he finished his work before he left. When I saw how sick he looked, I wondered how he could have kept on working. Well, I guess that's why the Roberts family trusts him so much. Me, I was around the mansion most of the time, either preparing the food or making sure that the other maids were doing their jobs. The fundraising event, which was to be held the following day, was important for Vivian. So we were all making sure that everything was perfect. By the time Mary left, it was already past midnight. I locked the doors and then went home myself. No, I live alone. Mary Martinez. My name is Mary Martinez. I've been working in the kitchen for the past few days for the upcoming fundraising event. Jimmy's Bakery was supposed to deliver the cakes, but a few days before the event, they called to inform that they can't make it. Suddenly, I was in charge of the cakes. I was so mad because we did not have much time and the event was supposed to be one of the most important days for Vivian's business. But after hearing that Vivian was murdered, somehow all that anger just disappeared. 
Derek Tyler. I remember dropping Mr. Roberts off at the airport on July 18th at around 2 p.m. I was supposed to come back after that to drive around for Vivian, but you told me to take a break since I haven't had a day off for quite some time. I decided to visit a friend of mine who moved upstate to Norwalk. What sort of friend? An elementary school buddy that used to live here, but moved when he received a scholarship to college. I stayed at his place for a few days before coming back to Paines Creek. Yes, he can vouch for me. I have his number at home. I can give it to you later. Derek never gave me the number. Hmm. Well, that's not a very good alibi, Derek. So, how ironclad are these alibis, especially from Matthew Brooks? I mean, Matthew Brooks sounds really, really ironclad. Huh. Would Derek want to kill Vivian? Derek's is the one that stands out the most, but I just don't see why Derek would want to kill Vivian. And Charles Roberts' um, alibi isn't all that great either. I mean, who can vouch for Charles actually being where he says he was? Say, I left for New York on July 18th. Derek says, dropped Mr. Roberts off at the airport on July 18th at around 2 p.m. Okay, but then... And then Derek just left. I mean, Derek didn't go with him or anything. So who's to say Mr. Roberts actually got on a plane? A car key? For a glove box? Huh. I'm assuming it's for a glove box. I mean, I can just use the Slim Jim to hack my way into any car. Well, there's a couple of glove boxes I can try. I think every car I've found has a glove box that's locked, but in particular, I guess the most interesting ones would be the car by the graveyard and, of course, Stephen Moss's glove box with the bloody handprint on it. That is <laughs> by far the most interesting one. Aha! Uh -huh. Lockbox 201. That would be for... Um, inside the Anne's Courtyard Inn and Suites. There's some, like, mail lockboxes at the front desk. I'm not gonna make a note of that, because I'm gonna go right there in just a second. My head hurts, my tire's flat, and the phone's not working. Is someone trying to stop me from leaving Payne's Creek? Am I close to finding something? My god, I thought he was the one, but I was wrong. He's not the killer. Damn it, Steven, why didn't you write more? <sighs> Who's to say somebody's not gonna stop me from leaving Payne's Creek? I thought he was the one, so... Stephen Moss thought the killer was a he. I guess that doesn't really tell you that much. I mean, that could be Bernard, that could be Matthew. Who knows? Derek. But, yeah, whoever the killer is, apparently it surprised Stephen Moss. Huh. Just, just a question, probably it doesn't have anything, this probably isn't true, but what if Sophia's ghost killed them? It doesn't really quite add up, but 
it would make some sense that Sophia would kill all the people that were involved in her death, you know? Vengeful spirit and all that. Don't know. But I mean, why would they... No, why would they kill Stephen Moss? That doesn't make any sense. Stephen Moss was trying to find what had happened. Trying to find the truth. 201. What is room 201, by the way? Was that Stephen Moss's room? I assume so. He's on to me, and I had to hide the key in one of the drains by the roadside. He will never find. Oh, so there's a key in one of the drains. That deserves a note. Where did Stephen get that note? Where did he find it? Well, this should be a to-do. Quote, is on to me. Had to hide the key in one of the drains. Open the drains, find the key. To do that, I most likely need a tool from Oliver's photo lab, but perhaps the hammer would work? I don't know. I, I think I need something to take off the bolts, so I think I'd need a wrench or something like that. the button for so a lamp is a button a switch that does something where is that I'm trying to think of where I've seen those lamps I mean I'm assuming the mansion would have that but hmm Another to do. Check. Um, keep an eye out for a certain wall lamp that is a switch. Check photograph. Five nineteen nineteen ninety seven. 1997 Ever since I received the telegrams and the key, I have been following this anonymous person blindly. What a fool I have been. I need to revisit my investigation notes and see if I might have missed anything important. I looked through the alibis recorded by Sheriff Howard. There were six interviews. Charles, Matthew, Bernard, Dorothy, Mary, and Derek. Then I noticed it. One of them is lying. It was recorded that there was an event, yet I remember reading somewhere about it being cancelled. Where did I read it again? Darn, I can't seem to remember. Ah. Hmm. So who went to events? I mean, it'd be either Charles or Matthew. My money's on Matthew, because I strongly suspect Matthew of doing many, many of the crimes we've heard. Okay. So... Stephen Moss thinks one of the events mentioned in the alibis is a lie because the event was cancelled. Which event? Let's well, Stephen Moss do this as well as Matthew and Charles. Oh my god, I just realized that the E in the killer's letter is different from the other alphabets. 
If I can find the typewriter, I can find who killed Vivian. Huh. I've found typewriters, haven't I? I found multiple typewriters that have a little, like, little bits written. I can think of two off the top of my head. One was, I think, with Scott. I don't remember where the other one was. Huh. I guess I'll make this a to-do. The E in the killer's letter is different from the rest. Find the kill. Find the typewriter that wrote it. Find the killer. God, I've got so many to-dos now. I feel like we're really closing in on the details here. Hello, darts. I hate darts now. Let's try the safe in the gallery at the mansion. So it should be Vincent, AKA Scott's Dob, which is 060175. I guess it's probably the other format, so 010675. What? Maybe. Okay, so it's June 1st, right? Which both only take one digit. And I was padding them out with a zero, so 06 and then 01 and then 75, but maybe it's just 61 and then 1975. Maybe those are just their single digits and the year is the full year. 61-1975. Yes! That feels good. Ah! That's the king. That's what I needed. D co is that even a word? Codicil? Oh, it is a word. Yeah, codicil is an addition or supplement that explains, modifies, or revokes a will or part of one. So yeah, it's like, I'm changing my will or amending it or what have you. Of uh, Randall Lewis. Uh, wait, to, of Randall Lewis? I, Charles Roberts, I, I don't understand Randall Lewis, but I, Charles Roberts of blah, 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 being of sound mind to clear the this codicil to my last will and testament dated blah 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 effective as of today june 21st i should note that june 21st 1975 so charles changed his will on june 21st 1975 Let's see, blah, blah, blah. Uh, should a boy be born in the Roberts family that is a direct lineage of Charles Roberts? If he's the eldest son and no other sons exist in the family, he shall inherit all the family's fortune when Charles Roberts passes away. The condition is that this child has to be of at least 25 years old. The firstborn child of the Roberts family shall inherit 50% of all the family's fortune should Charles Roberts pass away. Um... Vincent Roberts, born of Charles and Sophia, on June 1st, 1975, in Paines Creek, Nevada, shall be officially acknowledged to be a family member of the Roberts family as of July 1st, 1975. So, what exactly happened? I'm a little bit fuzzy on the details here, so we know Vincent Roberts is absolutely Scott, so they were renamed at some point. We know that Charles, you know, wanted Vincent or Scott. As an heir, we know Charles liked Scott. We know Magdalene also wanted Scott. 
it was Vivian. I, I think it was mostly Vivian who didn't. I mean, Dr. Johnson and Andrew were with Vivian when Vivian killed Sophia. I'm assuming it's Vivian who killed Sophia. But I feel like they were kind of just along for the ride. Johnson probably blackmailed by Vivian and Andrew just being a helper or whatever. So I feel like it was Vivian it was really the main one that wanted Sophia out. But what does Charles know of what happened to Sophia and Vincent? At some point, Charles ended up figuring out that Scott was Vincent, right? July 31st, 1995. I cannot believe that Scott killed my wife. It's all over the media. How can that be? He loves Trisha, and I treated him like my own son. It doesn't make any sense. August 13th. I visited Scott today. I asked him why he would kill Vivian. He did not answer, but simply looked down on the floor. I wanted an answer so badly that I felt anger burning inside me. Did he even feel any guilt or remorse as to what he had done? How can he not say anything? I'm thinking maybe Charles did not know that Scott was his son. Because he says, I treated him like my own son. That suggests to me that he doesn't know that he is his son. October 22nd. I visited Scott again today, knowing that he will be released soon. There just wasn't enough evidence to pin on him. He looked thinner than before, but I didn't care. I wanted to know why he killed Vivian. When I asked, he stared at me. I was so angry that I yelled at him. I was about to leave when out of nowhere he said, I pity you who is ignorant of everything. What the hell does that mean? November 2nd. I got drunk last night at the inn. Scott is now a free man. I think I babbled about how much I despised Scott and what, do I, what I would do to have someone get rid of him. Did I really say that? How did I get home anyway? Oh right, Bernard was with me. He drove me home. Huh, Bernard was with him when he said that I despised Scott and that he would love to have someone to get rid of him, such as Bernard. Man, that makes this really hard to figure out who killed Scott. Was it Bernard or was it Derek? This deserves a note. Charles mentions in his diary that he was drunk one day and mentioned to Bernard who drove him home that night that he would love it if someone killed Scott. So, is it Derek or Bernard? Bernard, Scott, Charles and Derek. Study room desk hint. Oh, I guess if you didn't actually see it on the lock itself, then you could go with this. Routing number, account number, email password. Doesn't matter. K is the king slash knight, which I already knew. Which would be this. 
Okay, so the king is four. I'm still missing the bishop though, right? Aha! Uh -huh. There we go. Yeah, I was missing the bishop, but I had enough to solve it. Because I know the knight, I know the king, and I know the queen. I don't know the orders of the knight or the king. Like, I'm not sure if which one goes on the left, which one goes on the right. But given that it could be either, you know, knight, queen, king, and then nine possibilities here, or king, queen, knight, nine possibilities here, that means there's 18 possibilities, which is easy enough to go through, which is just what I just did. Beckard's Investigation Services, July 17th, 1995, to Charles Roberts. Upon your request, we investigated Andrew Reed and Henry Johnson's deaths. Due to the confidentiality agreements with our resources, we are unable to reveal the true nature of their deaths. Suffice to say, both of them did not die of said accidents. So we dug deeper. We found out that Andrew and Henry were both related to the disappearance of Sophia Miller and the death of Magdalene Roberts 20 years ago. What really happened to Sophia, we do not know as of now. However, some evidence brought to light regarding Magdalene Roberts... Some evidence was brought to light regarding Magdalene Roberts' death. We talked to a retired nurse who used to work at the Paines Creek Community Hospital. Although she preferred to remain anonymous, according to her, she came across a letter while cleaning Dr. Johnson's office. In it, Dr. Johnson stated that the prescription was lethal and to be administered only to Magdalene, and the dosage has to be precise or it will not work. No one else should intake it. The letter was made out to your wife, Vivian Roberts. If you would like for us to stop this investigation, let us know at your earliest convenience. Otherwise, we will continue to find out the truth about Sophia's disappearance. Christ, could it have been Charles himself who killed Vivian? This definitely deserves a note, so I can delete this now. So Charles, after hiring an investigator, learned about the fact that Johnson and Vivian were responsible for killing Magdalene. And also involved in Sophia's death. Magdalene, Sophia, and Johnson. Wow, we're learning a whole lot, aren't we? Uh, okay, so this one's, this is, a uh, from the investigation services, but it's dated later. To Charles Roberts, our investigation was initially promising. We interviewed possible witnesses who might know something about Sophia's disappearance. Months later, however, we are nowhere near knowing what happened to Sophia. We searched through all the states for any possible trace, but to no avail. What we can conclude at this time is that the main cause of Sophia's disappearance has to do with Andrew, Henry, and Vivian. Now that they are gone, we are unable to get the real truth about what happened to Sophia. If you prefer, we can still continue the search. However, the results look bleak. We have posted rewards for any information regarding Sophia, hoping that it's just a matter of time before someone with real information steps up. For the time being, we suggest that you wait. Should anything emerge, you'll be the first to know. November 18th, 1995. Months ago, uh, right before Vivian was killed, I confronted her about Mom's death. She said she didn't know anything about it. She only administered the medicine as provided by Dr. Johnson. She's lying. I can see it in her eyes. She was scared and she was hiding her fear. I know that Vivian is not completely truthful with me, but I have no proof yet. She never liked Mom, but I wouldn't have thought her capable of killing Mom. I know that she had something to do with what happened to Mom and Sophia, but what can I do? She's my wife, after all. 
December 27th. Vivian is dead. So is Scott. Now Trisha's dead too. Is this my punishment for the affair I had 20 years ago? That makes it sound like Charles did not kill Vivian. Unless he just completely refuses to take any responsibility for it, which is possible. Also, I was looking around the mansion as I was going around here looking for that photograph that... This. I don't see any light that looks like it. Well, I found some lights that look like it on the upper floor of the mansion, but none of them were the right one. Because it looks like this one is near... I think that's a bookcase? It looks like a bookcase set into the wall or something. Yeah, none of them. None of them were there, and I tried to click on them anyway, and they didn't do anything. Alright, well, I think this is a pretty good place to end this episode. So, I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return, I'm going to follow up on the many, many other leads that I have. <laughs>